confié à Charlie Colère. On sait peu de choses sur lui. Il est pianiste, il élève son petit frère, et surtout, il ne veut pas d'histoire. Grâce à toi, les gens du quartier sont venus danser tous les soirs et la baraque a pris de l'importance. Shoot the Piano Player is the second feature film that Truffaut made after a very successful debut with The 400 Blows. The film was not quite as financially successful, but in some ways it seems to epitomize the spirit of the French New Wave in a way that may be slightly less true of The 400 Blows. Things that we associate with the French New Wave are taking their cameras out to the street, shooting on location, the use of available light. Choppy editing, which is epitomized by the kinds of jump cuts, which became so famous in Jean-Luc Godard's Breathless. Tu n'as jamais été gigolo, par hasard. Pourquoi? Truffaut's interest in developing Shoot the Piano Player as his second feature film really began as he was making his short film, Les Mistons. At the time, he was reading David Goodis's novel Down There, which is a kind of down-on-his-luck pianist. And even though it seems in many ways like a quintessentially American story, it's got gangsters, it's set in Philadelphia. Tu vas me faire le plaisir de t'installer à ta place devant le piano. Among the things that really appealed to Truffaut are the sense of loneliness that is suggested for the protagonist who seems to be a little bit cut off from the rest of humanity. The relationships with women and certain aspects of a criminal milieu that he could play with. Oh, là, si on a pas besoin. Je lui montrer. Bah, je sais que tu l'as. Il n'y a peut-être pas certain. D'accord, fais-lui voir. Truffaut had initially contemplated shooting in a studio for Shoot the Piano Player precisely because he viewed it as his American film. But things changed quite quickly when he realized that it would more than double the cost of the production. One of the most interesting stylistic choices that Truffaut made was to shoot the film in dialoscope, which is kind of French equivalent of anamorphic widescreen that in the U.S. was trademarked as cinemascope. The decision was one that Truffaut later reflected was almost a kind of naive choice. He said he wanted to shoot in cinemascope because knowing that he was working on a low budget with relatively unknown actors, it would give the film a professional aura, which would help it in the marketplace. Shoot the Piano Player was made for a rather tidy sum of $150,000, certainly a pittance when compared with the kind of Hollywood spectacles, which are made with big budgets and use Technicolor and scope as part of the selling points. However, what Truffaut really does bring to Shoot the Piano Player is a use of the scope frame that shows a deep understanding of the dramatic material and finds a way of meshing together form and content in such a way that they really reinforce one another. <laughs> 